Hey everybody, welcome to the Ungodly Geeks Podcast. Hey. Yeah. We do we know it we need to get some like just some cheesy game show esque intro music after the the main title our main title intro. We just need to have that that we can play in the background. Like like uh <laughs> the price is right type shit or something. Just just fucking because. Yeah. Just uh we'll do it for like special episodes yeah just every now and then no no re- no right no not even for special episodes just kind of do it randomly we're yeah. like and we just we don't a, talk about it and we, we, we just don't address segment. it and we just we just play game show music as we start the podcast while we're talking and then don't say anything about it Ooh, no i can we need to do a segment we need to do that game show music and then we come in and just act, ask a uh one of us asks the other a really stupid fucking question. Oh yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, like uh, like one of those fucking Facebook clickbaity sort of things. Right, and then we just rant on that for like twenty minutes. Yeah. So I'm Joe. Well, you know. Yeah. I'm Luke. All right. How you guys doing? <laughs> hey, so everybody. you were saying, funnily enough. I was gonna say, funnily enough, that's kind of how the whole idea for the uh, podcast started a bit. Where we were talking about what Disney characters, would yeah, be, yeah, would be which Avengers, with fucking Donald Duck, and like, I mean, yeah, Daffy Duck, not Donald. No, you, it was Daffy. Donald. Daffy is Warner Brothers. Wait, he's a little oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. God, I'm fucking tired this morning. Yeah, yeah, Mickey that Mouse, that guy, Goofy, <laughs> dude, Goofy. Like, what really sold me on that whole that whole thing that we were having was when. You said that uh, Hawkeye should be played by Goofy, and then we were like, <laughs> "But Goof, well, he's not like actually skilled at shooting anything. He's only getting bullseyes out of pure dumb luck. Like he oh, yeah. trips over the bow and shoots a Chitari like right in the face. Oh yeah, like he's aiming the wrong direction, shoots the bow, and like the fucking arrow bounces off six walls and hits like a Chitari that's about to, you know, stab somebody with a staff or." Right, he fucking, uh, he's aiming the arrow right at somebody, lets it go, and the arrow flies the wrong direction, <laughs> but still Just hits the target somehow. Stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Knocks over a fucking billboard that smashes into like eight ch- eight Chitari. Takes like out like a, he just takes out a whole platoon by himself somehow. He's pulling off like uh, Legolas level K- uh, KOs, and is just fucking looks like he's failing the whole time. But is being the absolute most successful that a Hawkeye has ever been. Yeah. Much to Donald just getting more and more angry about it as time goes on. <laughs> Even though there's no reason for him to be angry about things, but it's he just would be. Pissing him off. Which is good. I think we said Donald was the Hulk. Uh, was Donald the Hulk? Yeah, because he's the one with the anger problem. Yeah. And then uh, we said, uh, what did we say Mickey would play? Mickey would be like uh, Captain America, I think we said. Yeah, Mickey was either Cap or Stark. It depends on how you want to throw it. Yeah. Probably, I think he's more of a Cap. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, he's he's less of, of the uh, the douchey kind of fella. and Yeah. He would definitely be... Ha ha! Yeah. <laughs> Watch your language, ha <laughs> Language, please. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Tony Stark said shit, and that's not acceptable. It's not nope. acceptable. It's not cool. That's a potty word. <laughs> that's a potty <laughs> word. <laughs> oh man yeah that's the problem though is there's not enough of those disney characters unless you start pulling like aladdin and i mean yeah you would totally you totally would have to i i would think like uh i i don't know uh who would make play? aladdin stark iron man yeah yeah i think he i think he could he could do that fine um what about who who would play someone like loki though i guess you'd have maybe jafar Jafar might play Loki, because I mean that's a that's a pretty good pull. Um, you got someone like who would be Thor? Uh, Hercules. Oh yeah, I mean that's almost see that's when it gets almost too easy. Yeah, because like they're basically the same character. Yeah, you could start going. Yeah, you go through those and you find (laughs) fucking Elsa is just Elsa. Yeah, (laughs) she's fine. She She has it fit. Or she's Scarlet Witch, but all her powers are ice powers for some reason. <laughs> because she's Elsa. It, it works. She's yeah. fucking Elsa. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. It doesn't matter. What are you going to do about it? She'll fucking freeze you. 
Magic motherfucker. I ain't gotta explain shit. She'll stab you in the face with a big uh, ice spike. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? Overpowered Disney character. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, totally, totally overpowered. I mean, yeah, I think I think Good. Scarlet Witch is kind of like I don't know how powerful she's supposed to be because I don't actually uh, know anything about her. Like she was someone that was introduced to me with this uh, with this uh, this new uh, series of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know how powerful she's supposed to be, but apparently she's powerful enough to destroy an Infinity Gem. So I don't know, man. Are Infinity I Gems think... hard to hard to destroy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not they're not supposed to be destroyed. So I assume they, it's that had to take a lot of power. Um, I think it varies, but I think she's one of those characters that can like randomly they decide be just fuck off powerful. <laughs> like by the way, we're we're just gonna make her really like, stupid powerful. Yeah, like like uh, Kraken Planet's powerful, but I don't know. I, I might be wrong. I just I, I have that suspicion that she's one of those characters that they do that too sometimes, I mean, and then randomly she'll get pieced by. Like a fucking character like Ladderman or some shit like that, like a villain who has no business. <laughs> oh, like when Squirrel Girl beat uh, Thanos. Uh, and that's that's just a running joke. Squirrel Girl is the most powerful Marvel character and just beats all the villains, and it has to be off screen. And we'll comment on that was pretty easy with different villains. I I won't accept Why, that. Just, I'm sorry. No, I I, I oh, it's can't not, accept it's, that. It's technically it's technically Marvel canon. But it's not it's not something that happens in the main comics. It's it really is like a big joke. That's just not right, man. It's just no, it's, it's just not, not right. <laughs> it's not because why would you have any other heroes? Squirrel Girl beats all. <laughs> no. Fuck Squirrel Girl. She doesn't have the right to beat anybody. Apparently she does because of the power of squirrels. <laughs> I do love that when she wanted, I, I don't know if it was the one time she beat Doom, a different time she fought Doom. Doom is like, confound these squirrels. I get rid of one and two more show up or some shit like that. <laughs> and it's just the image of Doom being overtaken by squirrels. It's the greatest thing ever. I think I remember that. Yeah. Um, God. That panel. <laughs> that panel was just nuts. Weren't they like in a, on, on like a, 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 like a, weren't they on the moon too, I think? I don't or fucking know. They were they were not I know they were not on Earth. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe but, moon squirrels are super powerful. Maybe so, but do you think she would be able to control moon or is there like a universal squirrel language that she speaks that is uh, it like with cool, Aquaman, yes. how Aquaman can just telepathically communicate with all manner of marine creatures? Can she do that with with squirrels? Can she communicate with chipmunks or, or chipmunks? I don't, hell, I was just gonna say. I mean, what if she gets all rodents and she's just called Squirrel Girl? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, if she calls all rodents, does that mean she can like summon are, are marsupials in that in that? Because I know they're somewhat I related. I don't know. Can she summon <laughs> giraffe? Like, can she sit there? Not giraffes. What the fuck is wrong with me? Can she oh, sit there? Giraffes. And- <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking like kangaroos, and for some reason, my stupid primate brain said giraffes. It's like, no. Did she pull up giraffe? <laughs> it's a the giraffe, Eddie. Deal. It's a. It's not a giraffe. That's an elephant. But <laughs> oh man, I I don't know. I'm just. It's curious. Like it's it's like what what can Squirrel Girl actually do? Like apparently, everything. apparently she beats Thanos and Doctor Doom, and just. What? No, I won't accept all it. the biggest and strongest Marvel characters. You know, the one thing I do like, though, I like the I like the uh, the what if series. And uh, when they did uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel, you. Oh, yeah, that like was those. one I was willing to accept, but it was very well written, too. Yeah. Deadpool kills the Marvel, you. I think they did a Punisher kills the Marvel, you, which I, I will also accept that one. Uh, I, I don't think I, I do. I think with the Punisher one, I didn't read that one. I read Deadpool kills the Marvel, you. Yeah, but I think with Punisher kills the Marvel U, he only killed the ones on Earth for the most part, or maybe he got like the Infinity Gauntlet and wiped out the rest. I don't know. I know with Deadpool, he went cosmic and like wiped out the entire Marvel U, and, and then, then left the, writer. the Marvel U <laughs> and went yeah went after the writers like yeah, and it's, and it's then like it, went, it turns into Deadpool kills Deadpool and like another Deadpool. All the other Deadpools from different universes had to join together to kill that Deadpool, and it was just a whole fucking mess. You know that That's reminds. Where I stopped reading it for some reason. That makes me think of the uh, when they had the Deadpool and uh, 
what what dead not dead shot uh deadpool and the deathstroke yes the deathstroke uh, crossover and they're yes. like they they meet in deadpool's universe and they're doing all these things together that are deadpool like and deadpool looks over at him like hey do you have a healing factor too What's that? And then he just falls over and dies. Oh, oh, no, no, no! That's not Deathstroke. That's a uh, that's uh, that's an all Marvel thing. That's an alternate Marvel universe. Oh, is it? And yeah, and I I, I want to say that wasn't that was that universe versus Deadpool, but it was actually uh, it was actually Doctor Doom, and that universe is Deadpool had become Doom. I don't know, it was it <laughs> wow. was weird. I, I actually have that book because they pull. It's uh, like a team up with Deadpool, Spider Man, and the Hulk. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, is why yeah. I, had to buy I that. do. I do remember that. Yeah, I think I think that's actually where I read it. Yeah, I still actually have yeah, that one. Uh, um, the Deadpool comic series that we have. I actually still have the second book of yours that I haven't read yet. It's still sitting over here on my uh, my side table. Is that the one you replaced, or did you replace the first? No, one? I replaced the first one because the cat spilled okay. water on it. No, yeah. this is the second one. The first one's where we fight the dead presidents and teams up with Doc Strange. Uh, I love that one. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> and then the second one here, uh, he goes against Shield. It's Deadpool versus Shield. Yeah. And I haven't read that one yet. Uh, it's it, like I said, it's just been sitting on my my nightstand table thing over here for like a year and a half. Like literally, that's how long it's been sitting there. Oh, it probably been longer than that. You know, that's very. Uh, I can probably tell you. Like, read for years. No, I don't think it's been that long. You know, probably at a least two time. and a half years now she said something though. It's been a really long while. Yeah, I finished those. I, I I didn't even, I have the last two or three in that run. Actually, this of, might uh, be the third big book. books. Uh, and I, ha- I haven't, like, read them yet. Right. <laughs> Just sitting over there. Because it, it does take a turn for the more serious and it's still good. It's just I, I once I had to wait to get them in the mail. Yeah. When I ordered them, it was like I got them. I was like, yeah, I'm going to read these. And then they got set to the side and never read. I mean, That's what I do with many things. Yeah, we got so much stuff that we have to do, man. We just don't always have yeah. the ability to sit down and watch and read this shit. Actually, that might have been around when we started the podcast, too. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what we're talking early 2017, so maybe. Yeah. We've been doing this. Oh, so- no, that was before the podcast then. Yeah, so I think I got those uh, like 2016. Either way, I know I started playing. Um, finally, playing Deus Ex: uh, Mankind Divided again after, and I didn't realize how long it had been since I played that. My last save was like uh, January first, 2016, or like January something, 2016 or June. I don't remember. Just know it was a month with a J. But I was like, holy shit! I didn't realize it had been that long. Uh, okay, Steam's being retarded. Oh yeah. Uh, I just pulled it up because you you reminded me of something, and uh, mm-hmm. and now I don't remember what you reminded me of because Steam is being what stupid. Steam do now? Um, so Steam is telling me I have a notification right, and it says one new item in my inventory. But then when I click on it, it takes me to my inventory screen, and it says my inventory is currently private. Oh, I get that every single time. I it's have like, something in my inventory. I have to refresh it every time. It tells me. Uh, uh, Luke's uh, inventory is private, and I'm like, yes, but I am me, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I, I am me. Oh, apparently they gave me a coupon for 25 percent off a game called Graveyard Keeper. Oh, and it's valid until 8:30. And what is this? Actually, I looked at that game just yesterday because the uh, the picture is like it looks like um that farming simulator game that came out a while back. Uh, yeah, Stardew uh, Valley. Yeah. Uh, and the, just the, the little image they go for on the Steam homepage, it just says Graveyard Keeper. Looks like there's a little building behind it and a donkey that is yelling. <laughs> yeah, the guy's riding the donkey. He's got a shovel in his hand. There's a skull biting the donkey's tail. And then, like, in, in the title, there's just a, a skeleton sitting there. It's just, like, chilling, giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the smaller image when you're looking through all popular games, it's cut it down so it's put the logo right next to the donkey's head, and yeah. all you get is the logo and the donkey's head. <laughs> and you're just kind of looking at that like, is that supposed to be right? What is, what is that? Yeah, but honestly, <laughs> it looks kind of entertaining. I love the uh, the description of the game is that the whole point of it is 
um, capitalism. Capital <laughs> Graveyard Keeper is the most inaccurate medieval cemetery management sim of all time. Build and manage your own graveyard and expand into other ventures while finding shortcuts to cut costs. Use all the resources you can find. After all, this is a game about the spirit of capitalism and doing whatever it takes to build a thriving business. And it's also a love story. <laughs> and like, Sounds awesome. There's like a gif in the description where your character is throwing a body into a river that <laughs> just float <laughs> downstream. This will this. take up room. Fuck. Fuck that. That'll take time. I could just throw it in this river. Oh, man. Yeah, actually, that looks like a pretty good game. Like I said, it looks like Stardew Valley. I don't know if it's done by the... No, it's not bear Chucklefish. Games. It's Lazy Bear. Tiny Build is publishing it. Um, they made Punch Club and Graveyard Keeper. Is Tiny Build the publisher of the other games, though? Oh, I don't know who publishes the other game. I bought I bought Stardew Valley on the Switch, played a little bit of that. Nope, Concerned Ape. Chucklefish is the publisher, Concerned Ape is the, Ape is the developer. Okay, yeah, I didn't think so. Face Ethical Dilemmas. Do you really want to spend money on that proper burger meat for the Witch Burning Festival when you have so many resources lying around? <laughs> Gather valuable materials and craft new items. Expand your graveyard into a thriving business. Help yourself. Gather the valuable resources scattered across the surrounding areas and explore what this land has to offer. Quests spend corpses. These dead bodies don't need all those organs, do they? Why not grind them up and sell them to the local butcher? Or you can go on proper quest, you role player. Explore mysterious dungeons. No medieval game will be complete without those. Take a trip into the unknown and just find and find discover new alchemy ingredients. Which may or may not poison a whole bunch of nearby villagers. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, I'm, I'm somewhat interested. I got a coupon on it. We'll see. It's only got mixed reviews. Yeah. It's one of those games where I'll buy it on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, if it comes out on the Switch, I, I might buy it there. No, I don't know. I, I, uh, I might be a little bit more stingy on a game like that since Stardew Valley. I played for like, I don't know, five or six hours and then I never touched it again. Right, yeah. I, I don't even think even I started I it up. It. I seriously just, don't even think I started it. It's like, eh, uh, I don't know. It's I, one of those games you got to put a lot of time in. Yeah, and I, I've already, I, I already have enough of my time being eaten up um, because what I've basically been doing the past, uh, like, three weeks is just kind of chilling and relaxing and mm -hmm. watching the Marvel, the Netflix Marvel series. So, yeah, I just got through uh, Jessica Jones season two. And uh, I still have to watch that. How was it? It was pretty good, man. Like okay. it, it was it was just it's just more of the same, um, but not like in a bad way. Not like it, it didn't fatigue me because um, okay, Jessica Jones was hard to watch. Like it was de it was like 90 percent depressing. This one, this one's this one's about as depressing, but there's <laughs> more there's more story to it. Okay. So there's 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 a, there's a lot more going on this time around. It's less Jessica punching things and drinking all the time, and more. Oh, now that's happening. Oh, this is happening. Oh, okay. There's stuff going on now. So I think season two is is better than one. I can definitely say I enjoyed Jessica Jones season two more than I enjoyed Iron Fist season one. Okay. And I actually liked Iron Fist compared to most people thinking it was just it was just mediocre i do agree it was kind of meh but i i enjoyed jessica jones season two more than more than iron fist okay maybe i will check it well i know i'm gonna check it out i've got to eventually walk read watch through that and then watch through uh um luke cage luke cage season two yeah yeah you've already watched the defenders right yeah oh yeah and you're pretty much set up for luke cage season two Mm -hmm. because uh, you definitely got to watch the defenders first before you watch Luke Cage season two. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I started season two of them like, what the hell? So, yeah, well, I mean that part we were talking about, <clears throat> I had completely forgot that it happened in the, uh, uh, in the defenders. Cause it was at the, like at the very end and everything. Yeah. It was literally like the second to last episode. Yeah. And like I said, after watching the Punisher, I completely like wrote off everything else. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's nice. Punisher was the shit. <laughs> Punisher was the shit. Holy crap, man. Like, I, I still don't think I've been... I've had my mind blown more by a series of TV, except for maybe, like, The Shield, um, yeah. than, than I have been with, with uh, fucking The Punisher, man. The Punisher was just... Oh, it's so brutal in all the ways it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I loved it. And, uh... 
Oh, we got season three of Daredevil and season two of uh, Iron Fist dropping next month, I believe. Both of them in the same month? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. All right. Let me double check, but I think they both drop on the same day, actually. Uh, I think it's... I bo- think... I, I think it's September 9th. I had the suspicion that um, Daredevil season three, or at least when he comes back, that um, he's going to be a villain. And I believe he's going to probably be the villain of uh, Iron Fist season two, Ooh. or at least maybe not like maybe not like the the biggest villain. But I think Danny Rand is going to come back, and he's not going to be necessarily Danny Rand. I mean, I was sitting here, I was sitting here because I know they dropped. Uh, um, I know they dropped what should I call it? The uh, trailer for it. I guess I haven't. Uh, okay, September seventh is when Iron Fist season two drops. I guess they don't have this, the actual date for Daredevil, Daredevil yet. Three. Yeah, but I know okay. it's coming out. I know it's dropping soon <clears throat> because it was confirmed it's coming out later this year. Mm-hmm. I want to say all think th- like, Punisher season two is even this year too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of life. speaking of Marvel stuff, you, uh, you see that uh, Disney and Marvel are not rehiring James Gunn for Guardians three. Yep, they did their talk and everything, and they decided that they're not going to hire him. I, I honestly, I didn't think they would, because I can't see Disney as the company as being willing to go back on their, you know, what they've stated. Yeah. So I think what that meeting really was, was not about getting him rehired. It's probably, like, leaving on a, I don't want to say mutual, like, good terms, but probably. I, I think it was a matter of just kind of clearing the air about probably what that's, was going what down why yeah why why things were, were being done the way they were being done um i mean it sucks but i think they're also from what i do understand though they are at least using his script um, oh is that did they confirm that i think I, I, I know the rumor was before that that he was it was not going to use the script yeah i think they are going to go through with the script now i was reading something about it a couple of days ago um but uh, yeah, I think they're going to use his script, but they're he, they're just not going to have him direct. Mm. Okay, know. but it's like it it sucks, man, because to fire him over something like this, it's just I mean we've talked about this so many times, but I'm not going to let it go. Like it was a stupid yeah. thing to fire him for. I would hope that them working together would mean that either he's going to maybe be a producer or he's going to come back. Maybe for another Marvel property or for Guardians. Another Guardians, like a spinoff, I don't know, something. I just really, it, it, I, I really hope they didn't just cold turkey fucking, no, you're done. Move on, you know, moving on type thing. Yeah. Because I just, I, I think it, it has far further reaching effects than just um, this situation. I think it sets a bad precedent. Yeah, according to Screen Rant, um, James Gunn's Guardian of the Galaxy, uh, Guardian is a yeah, the Galaxy Three script will mostly be used. They're not going to be. It's not going to be completely taken from that, but they're going to use uh, okay. most of it, which um, is understandable. Any, yeah. Any time you're switching directors, you should, especially if the first director wrote the script, get this. You know, you need to have some people work uh, on something that they're feel, they're comfortable working on. You know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and that comes from variety, so it's actually got mm-hmm. some weight behind it. So I mean, that that's kind of nice. Um, Makes me feel pretty. Makes me feel a little bit better about it because I mean, if they weren't going to use his script, I didn't think I was going to go see the movie. To be honest with you, yeah, I honestly, because I don't know <laughs> if they're going to make another Thor movie. Um, I want them to let Taika Waititi do it. <laughs> <laughs> that would let be him direct. That would be amazing. Uh, it's all. It might be almost too different, but I, and no matter who you pick, it's going to be. It's going to feel different. Yeah, it's just. Thor needed that. I don't think Guardians necessarily needs to like take a one eighty, but it is a comedy, so it's still right in his wheelhouse. I, I think. I, I think. I don't know yeah. You have to do it. I think if you if you do give it to Taika, I think it'd be fine if you gave it to Taika Waititi. Like I don't. I think he would he would be able to keep like that comedy aspect alive and and keep it fun like it should be. Because I mean, the very first Guardians, that's what it was. It was fun. It was just it was goofy and it was great. It had mm. it had action, which it needed, but it had that it had that that comedic feel to it that I don't know that any other of any other Marvel movie besides 
Ragnarok has had. So I mean, yeah, I think I think Taika Waititi not to that extent. They yeah, don't not have to the banter, but that that like Guardians was like just it, it was a comedy space opera. Yeah, no, I mean, um, the banter is just that's just uh, Robert Downey Jr. being Robert Downey Jr. Well, it comes from um, from that, and then from uh, uh, what's his name um, directed Avengers. Uh, he kind of set that standard with the yeah. first Avengers movie. Talking about Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon, yeah. It's yeah. very, very Whedon. And then they took that and were like, this is what makes us like successful and separates us from uh, being just generic yeah. superhero, I guess. And uh, hey, it works for me. Yeah, it definitely worked really well. Like, fuck, you know, I think I think I might, yeah, after I'm done with all the Marvel Netflix series, I might sit down and watch all the Marvel movies again. Mm-hmm. I've uh, I bought the Blu-ray for... Uh, Infinity War. I'd have. I was gonna sit down and watch it on my days off, but I'll probably uh, maybe I'll do that on Sunday or something. Hey, yeah, you know, we're both off Sunday. Maybe I can join you. Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. Cause uh, I, I I love that. I love that fucking flick, man. It was a good movie. All right, so, so we got some good. other stuff to talk about. Uh, fucking Blizzard is doing something kind of awesome, and they're releasing uh, they're releasing Diablo three with some DLC yeah. on the Switch. Yeah, this was funny to me since I guess back in I heard as early as March, mm-hmm. um, there were ru- there was a rumor and they were teasing that it was coming to the Switch. I don't remember that, but I mean, who knows? I don't pay that much attention to that kind of stuff. I don't keep it in my brain because my brain is full of fuck. Yeah, but I'm, uh, I, I'm personally not a huge. I got love Diablo two. I never got into three because yeah, you know I had server I had issues back when the the open beta was there. Actually, I got in for the closed beta, couldn't get on, and I said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. See, I got, when I played that game, I had the Xbox 360. Yeah, that was back in the 360. Or was it Xbox One? I don't remember. I think it was the 360. Either yeah, way. No, you know, we're yeah. talking before the one. Yeah, so I had the 360 version. And I think I rented it, because I know I didn't play it for very long. but Or I got it, like, I don't know. I got it, I know I got it late, and I got it on that. But, right. um. I played it with a couple of my friends online, and I'm, I think we played it for about 20 hours or so, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, it didn't have the problems that the PC version did when they launched it, since they wanted to try and force people to use their marketplace, and basically they turned Activision turned it into a cash grab. Well, I blame Activision. Who knows? Maybe it was the guys at Blizzard. But I don't know. I still it blame got it. turned into a shitty cash grab, and damn near ruined the game. No, I, I still... I definitely blame... I definitely blame Activision. <laughs> yeah. Damn near ruined the fucking game on PC. And it took them a while before they finally reset the loot tables because what they had done, and this is this is absolutely fucking, like, not, not just crazy. It's like, you fucking dirty assholes. They set it so you would more, like, more than likely get loot drops for other classes. So items and, and armor, weapons, shit that you couldn't use. So that you would have to take it to their marketplace and sell it on there. And obviously they were selling their own currency outside of it. So people would have to do that. Yep. You couldn't just buy it with in-game currency. No. And it was a fucking mess. It was people were absolutely livid and it ruined their game. Similar to the way we see stuff that happened with um, the Warner last... Brothers and uh, Shadows of or what Shadow is War. Shadow, yeah, Shadow yeah. War. DSX, yeah. Uh, I'm playing uh, Mankind Divided now. They had a system similar to that. Or not, not, not necessarily like that, but they set up a system where you could just buy the in-game credits and weapons and ammo and like all that stuff. You could use real money to buy it. And I, I don't know if they had ruined the in-game economy, but I heard it was terrible for a long time until finally Square went, oh, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't have done this and changed it so you earn more money or things cost less in-game. Right. But it, it was apparently like. Like these companies doing these like really shitty practices, ruining their own fucking games. And there's a lot of people who didn't go back to Diablo three after that. Yeah, no, I mean they they lost that. they lost a pretty good uh, chunk of their player base at that point. Yeah, and um, like who can really blame them? You know, like that's, and a game that is, didn't deserve it because it yeah. was a fun fucking game. I absolutely loved it on the 360. I mean, what was I was able to play of it, uh, it was Diablo. It was great. Yeah. Like, it's a dungeon crawler. You, you you move in a direction and you kill the little things that come at you. Yep. I mean, that, that's how it works. Um, I just read a, a, a funny little a little thing here. 
in the X Men in the, in Deadpool two when they go to the <laughs> they go to the uh, the uh, the act the mansion and Ryan Reynolds uh, Deadpool's fucking with Cerebro he actually breaks it yeah like he Ryan actually Reynolds broke, broke Cerebro the prop. yeah he actually broke the prop in in the movie and that happened in real life and was a complete accident and they said fuck it and left it in the final cut <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds about right. God like I just, I love that 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 was a thing that that he did. Like, whoops, uh, we didn't mean to do that. And fuck it. An actual quote from him: "That was an actual accident on the day. I didn't mean to do that at all. It just snapped." Yeah. <laughs> just and then snapped. of course, Reynolds like uh, David Leach joke. So you actually broke a historical X Men prop to which Reynolds re- la- laughingly replied, "Oh, great, great! I'll get a strongly ri- a strongly written letter from Patrick Stewart." <laughs> Oh man, Patrick Stewart really should have written him a strongly worded letter. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I want, I want it to be a thing. I want him to say, um, just, just dumb shit like that. Mm-hmm. I, I want, I want that to be a thing. Um, I, Patrick Stewart, write that letter. I want it. I want it. To, I want it to come true. You bloody cunt. <laughs> oh man, I don't know, man. I'm just yeah. Oh uh, well. I know. I, I like like we said. I can't wait for Diablo three on the Switch. Yeah, no. I'm, I mean, that's gonna be that that's gonna be a buy for sure. I'm gonna yep. definitely have to grab that. So you um, think uh, you think Sony's ever gonna get on board with this cross platform play? I see. I'm of two minds on this. I really I like that Bethesda is uh, is pushing them. However, I really wish they were doing it with Fallout seventy six, a game that Sony would maybe think means something instead of this fucking uh card battle game i i just i think it's i think it's dumb yeah like, i mean if, we've uh, talked about this before but i really do think this is sony kind of kind of shooting themselves in the foot yeah no, no no it's it's terrible practice so if you guys haven't heard sony is still being dicks about cross-platform play and um bethesda has uh their do you know what the game's called because i can't remember Oh, I I don't know it's, actually. It's an Elder Scrolls card game. Oh, I'm talking like about Elder the, Scrolls Legends. Legends, yes. Yeah, yeah, the card so, game, which is great actually. Yeah, it's supposed to be a good card game. Uh, I I don't like digital card games. I played the Magic ones a little bit, and they were all right. But either way, people like them. Uh, it is coming to a bunch more platforms soon. Now it's already been out on PC and the iPad, and that's important because when you're playing that game, you buy decks of cards and i assume or maybe not you buy individual cards whatever you do you put money in the game you build your decks um therefore it's pretty important to be able to switch if you want to play it onto a different console to have that available to you right yeah as i mean well as i mean and that's that's a thing that even nintendo has done um like with pokemon yeah. shuffle if you've been playing it on your 3ds or your cell phone you can transfer progress vice and vert like back and forth between the two exactly exactly uh, and it, it's like a no brainer. Yeah. Also with a card game like this player wise, you're not going to have uh, uh, on any given system. You might not have that big of a player base and this game lives or dies on being able to find matches in quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. The only way to ensure that happens is to cross platform play. Um, and it'll actually, that I mean, improve it overall too. You get more people that way. Because anybody can pick it up and play it wherever. <clears throat> so Sony, of course, are being the assholes that they are about this again, and or n- are not wanting to allow cross platform play at all. They're still dragging their heels. They're still saying using like like the same not ex- uh, excuses. Yeah. They keep saying things. Oh, we're working on it. We're seeing what we can do. Type bullshit. I mean, and like the thing is, and I guess I kind of understand where they're coming from, and I mean. They they don't want something purchased on a non Sony system to be usable on a Sony system, which no, but okay, but still yeah. no because fuck you, you're being and it's something they don't want anybody else's yeah like they don't want to have want to have their they want to pretend that nobody else's console exists. So if you're playing something on the Sony console, you only would play it on there, even though that doesn't make any sense because if they're playing on the sony console they've already bought the sony console yeah why why pretend that they're not going to play it on their cell phone or on a pc or on the Xbox one or yeah i mean 
and I, I, it's just so consumer unfriendly, and yeah. that 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 kind of boggles my mind because if you remember back when the Xbox One was was, was announced, the PS4 were announced, you know they were like the consumer friendly oh, know, yeah. company. You know, like, I still I still remember when they were talking about the letting your friend borrow a game thing, and they, <laughs> he, he held the game up, handed it to the other guy, the other guy oh. took it, and they both looked at the crowd and smiled. It was like... Yeah, it's that easy. It, it was, was the it, biggest bitch slap ever. It was, it was more than a bitch slap. It was a dick slap. Like, they're just slapping you... They were just slapping Microsoft right across the face with a giant dong. Yeah. And it's like... Well, like I've said before, with, with the announcement, that E3 specifically, with the Xbox One, Microsoft made the wrong decision on every single decision and they're they're kind of co- they're coming back from a lot of that i still think there's a lot of shitty things about the xbox one yeah especially its fucking interface it's god awful <laughs> its interface um, will never like i remember the classic xbox 360 interface and how just beautiful and fluid it was yeah it was pretty good the blades and then even the updated versions of it were like yeah like the newer the newer dashboard right before they got into the metro design was still really good yeah and then xbox one seems to be designed to fill your face with more advertisements and other bullshit that you don't care about rather than what you actually want to do uh it's really it's really frustrating yeah but um yeah but they're now they're being the company of hey everybody come play I think because they're in second place. Um, and surprisingly, Nintendo is just like, yeah, what? You want us to join? Okay. Like, <laughs> amazingly, Nintendo's the company that's being like, oh, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll let them play games. Yeah, we could do that. That's no problem. Yeah, you would expect, like, you'd have to buy, like, a Mario Amiibo and, like, sleep with it under your bed for a week before you're allowed to <laughs> connect. Sit there and, like, get a statue of Reggie and just pray to it every yeah. night for like two <laughs> months straight like please reggie please give me give yeah. me cross play but no like they just came and said oh yeah you could you could totally do that yeah <clears throat> and i still i i really I th- i'm glad that bethesda is saying either you allow cross play or you don't get the game mm-hmm. i just really really wish they'd said it with fallout 76 because yeah. now i don't know if fallout 76 is even getting cross play um because sony's not on board you get other companies like uh, um, uh, the fucking. I have no idea where we're going. Game. It's not a cart uh, battle Hearth- game. Hearthstone? No, no, no. Cart. Um, cart Rocket battle. League. Rocket League, yeah. Rocket League. Cart battle race game. With no. not any of those things. It's none of those things. <laughs> Soccer with, but with remote control cards. Soccer with explodable vehicles. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Rocket League. They. I mean, they, they just. Of, you know, do it without Sony. Same mm-hmm. thing with uh, Fortnite. They just do it cross-play without Sony. Well, I except really... with Fortnite, you actually, I think with both of those games, if you link your account with, with a Sony account, you can't play that game with that account anywhere else. Yeah, no, no, that that's even extra shitty, but I'm not even going into that territory. I'm simply saying just being able to play the game with people on other consoles and PC and everything. Yeah, they're just um, going, they're just like, alright, well, fuck you then. Yeah, just just being able to do that, and I don't know if Fallout seventy six is going to do that now, and if that stops them from doing that, one that's a really stupid fucking decision on Bethesda's, Bethesda's part. Yeah, for and sure. I kind of the cynical part of my mind would say they're making that decision to not do it at all because it's the lazy and easy decision for them. And Bethesda's that company that, especially with the Elder Scrolls and Fallout, um, they seem like they. They want to cut as many corners as possible, and that's yeah. a big corner they can cut. I mean, that's just Bethesda. Like that, yeah. That's reflected in their games. The fact that they release these buggy piles of shit and the community is the one, are the ones who fixes it. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. something we should expect by now. Which is even more of a big worry for a game like Fallout 76. Since they're already expecting the community to be uh, everything in-game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like maybe maybe they'll oh, they'll fix the bugs because they don't have to develop any AI they don't, or any like uh, NPCs or any economy or anything. They're just gonna let the players do that. Yep, which sounds awful. Yeah, I'm I. It's just gonna be a big empty world, and that, that that's something I'm afraid of. Is it's gonna that's end what up, I'm afraid of as well. Yeah, it's just gonna be, uh, and it's not like I'm gonna play it because 
you know, like, don't don't kill me, guys. I'm not a Fallout fan. I never got into the yes. series. So it's like, I, I, I'm not going to be playing it, but it's still really, really bothersome, you know? like Yeah, depending that, on what I hear from it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm playing it either. I like Fallout. I really like the Fallout universe. And I'm kind of, at first, I was really, really angry about this game. Right. But I'm kind of now just categorize, categorizing it the same way I did the Elder Scrolls Online. Right. Is it's not my Elder Scrolls game. It's something completely different. It's it's a fucking it's taking up my time the time that I should be getting my next game. Yeah. My next fix. But at least it but it's not so I'm not gonna hate on it. Yeah. It's it's just not for me. And I don't know, we'll see with Fallout seventy six. It might be really fun. It might be fun to play every once in a while. But my problem with these games like that, um, is it's a uh, live services and they want you to play nothing but that game. Yeah, and I'm I'm not the kind of person that does that. Yeah, I'll no, play I mean, a game and I'll put hundreds of hours into it, but that is in a pretty short amount of time, and then I'm I'm dropping it. I'm yeah, no, I stuff. mean, yeah, like I I got a lot of games I want to play. Uh, I gotta say though, I do like I I agree that I love the Fallout universe. Like uh, the Fallout universe is great. There's a ton of interesting lore there, but yeah. the games I never got into them. So like I don't hold anything yeah. against them. I just I never I tried to play Fallout Three. And it, it just didn't capture my attention the way something like Skyrim or Morrowind did. It didn't yeah. catch my attention the same way that, that Hollow Knight or The Witcher 3 has. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't take anything away from them. I just never played them. Never, I yeah, couldn't get I mean, into it's them. It's similar with like, you did, like Oblivion. You skipped over that in Skyrim. Yeah, well, I, Skyrim. though to be fair with Oblivion, I only skipped over that because I didn't have a way to play it. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I, I don't... I don't hate Oblivion. I've played Oblivion. I've got a good 15... I only got like maybe 10 to 15 hours in it, but I, I am familiar with Oblivion. But Oblivion <laughs> wasn't one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't want to fucking play that game. Sucks. It was... <laughs> Potato people. <laughs> it was... Well, I just didn't have a way to play it when it was at its, pop, at, at its peak. And yeah. now that I've played Skyrim, I can't go back to Oblivion as easily. And I also... Yeah. I mean, even though I have so many fond memories of um morrowind i i can't go back and play it either so yeah oh yeah that's i why well, i haven't gone back to play uh fall on new vegas even though i really want to i mean yeah new vegas is i i might have to look into new vegas if i can ever catch it on a on a sale because a lot of people say it's better than three um it's it's got more and i i really do like it more than three um but I don't really I, I don't go back and forth between one being so much better than the other. New Vegas has a lot of little extra things and the story has more options to it. Right. But I still really love three. Three, um, to me, the the uh, map is more interesting right. than New Vegas. Uh, New Vegas is great and there's a lot of stuff to it. But I love just the amount of destroyed environments from Fallout 3 going through Washington, D.C., like when you go to um, the Capitol, like I, like the main, uh, I don't know, I think it's like around the White House and everything, like uh, the right. uh, maybe the mall or something. I don't right. remember where it is actually in reality. However, it is just a complete fucking war zone, the whole area. And it was one of those, like playing that game for an open world game like that. I hadn't, I don't think I ever played a game where like you go in and it's like, oh my God, it's just fucking battle after battle. Since there's super mutants everywhere, there's trenches that you're running through. Right. Um, yeah, it was it, honestly, it was fucking awesome. Uh, and I love both games. And I do, I, I, I do like Fallout New Vegas more. I think there's more options with weapons and everything that make it that flush it out more. Right. There's, uh, right. The companions are more interesting. Just the story is, the story is, it, it, it's interesting and deeper. Right. Than Fallout Three. Um, but I don't. I, it's not something that makes me hate on Fallout Three or think it's like bad. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't hate on any of them. It's just it never got into them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to see Bethesda be a little bit more. I don't know. I, I didn't play Fallout One and Two, um, but I know a little bit about the lore and the story of those two games. Right. And Bethesda, Bethesda has pretty much made it their goal to ignore that lore and stuff. Yeah. Which is kind of shitty since right. they they're really they're really great with lore and uh, Elder Scroll. And then with that, they kind of like half pretend like it's there and then it's not. I, uh, I would say that, 
I would say they're kind of okay with lore on Elder Scrolls. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> like I, I, I'm Maybe somebody... Because I don't know the lore. Yeah. yeah. I have delved That's very, strange. very deeply into the lore. Um, they're okay. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. going to say they're great about it. Because there's, there's... I think there's... Of all the games that I've had that, that, that have played, you know, as, as extensively as the Elder Scrolls series that have as deep a lore as it does. I, I think um, I think that they probably have the most contradictory stuff. You know, that's just, just tons okay. of lore and stories and stuff that's, you know, quote-unquote canon that just conflicts other things. I, I don't know that they're... Uh, <laughs> Never mind, then. Yeah, that falls right in with... The- <laughs> yeah, like, there's tons of contradictions and stuff like that. Yeah. And so... And while that's not necessarily bad, it's it's just it makes for a messy story. It makes for a messy just everything. It just makes it messy. Yeah, uh, that is one thing I can say for New Vegas that it, it like is it's really really good. It's really it makes that game really fun to play and to just do all of the side the side quests. They feel like the stories uh, not just matter; they're interesting. Right. Um, whereas like. Fallout Three, there's a few good ones, and then they're in generic kind of stuff. Right. Um, but with with New Vegas, a lot of them like they have the, it. It feels like there's more to it. Like there's a backstory to that side story, and you can find out. And there's lots and lots of lore. Right. And Fallout Four kind of has that, except it's not. It's not in the side quests. It's in like reading the um, computer terminals and reading and. and that's where you get that. That's where I got that fix out of yeah, that game. Right. And those, those were great. I loved going through a building and checking all the terminals and you could piece together the story of what was happening. Um, like right before the bombs fell or right. sometimes if the buildings have been taken over for a long time, you can piece together a story of what's been happening, you know, in the last like year or so or whatever in the game. But Fallout New Vegas did that really good with the game. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean that that that's kind of a big deal, truthfully. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean that's to me that's the way a game should be. Um, it's something that we kind of uh, I think a lot. I, at least I've kind of forgiven Bethesda for in the past with like um, Skyrim and Fallout Four and stuff. Is that it's like oh well we have all of this stuff to do and it's really it's so much and so big. So it's like uh, okay, so you're cutting corners on this or Skyrim like all of this fucking. Go here and retrieve my family's hat from a dungeon with Drogar. In the same fucking looking dungeon with the same fucking Drogar you've been fighting for nine hundred hours. Yeah, there's a lot of copy paste. I mean yeah. that that was one that that's a thing that I have. Like I wish there was more uh more variety in in what you could encounter in that game. Yeah, that that was one of the first mods I downloaded Skyrim. I mean PC yeah. was extra creatures because the environment itself in that game, the dungeons were so terrible. Yeah. All of them to the tombs were like, what, what, what is, did you fucking make one and then go, we got it. Just take these map pieces and fling them around and we're good. And like, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that, that is pretty much what they did. <laughs> like, like seriously, <laughs> there's so much shit that you see. And, and I, I, I kind of get it too. Cause to sit there and craft a world like that is, yeah. is incredibly, incredibly, just tedious there's gonna be a shitload of work in that so I, i'm not completely mad at them but see that's why i like games that just procedurally generate the dungeon so you don't have to worry about that you know like it might it might look the same but you're not going to be exploring the same same dungeons over and over and over again and that's why i'm attracted to games like dark or uh, dead cells because it's different every run mm-hmm you go a different path, you find different things. You might fight the same enemies over and over again, but that's 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 a little uh, I, uh, I don't know. It's only I don't know how to describe it. But it's like you said, you know, you're just you're you're delving into the same caves over and over again. Yeah, oh yeah. It's it's repetitive. It gets really really repetitive. As part of the problem with Fallout 4, even though I was like I, I it had me hooked for a long long time. Finally, I just hit a point where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Was there anything else? Um, oh, uh, Battlefield Five came out with a new trailer that actually looks good. Finally. Oh, okay, that's cool. 
Yeah, I, I'm still about fucking time. I, I'm still like kind of amused that there were so many people mad about a woman being on the cover of it. See, I don't get that because there was a woman. Uh, I mean, it's not the cover of the game, but the uh, every time they released the new DLCs for Battlefield One, yeah, um, they would change that. And the one for what was it, Enter the Czar? I think it was Enter the Czar. No, it was the one, the Russian one, where they add the Russian campaigns. Yeah. Um, that one had a woman in it because it was all about female snipers. The right. sniper class actually changed the character model to a, a woman. Because didn't and I don't Russia? Russia had like an entire uh, platoon of, of female snipers. I'm well, World War One. It was. Um, I don't know if they had that platoon. And that in World War Two, they definitely did. Right. In World War One, it's it was part of. They were part of like the. It was just revolution. So it was anybody picking up a gun. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's like whatever. Oh, that's, I, I, out of all the things to hate yeah. from that trailer, that's not the thing. The uh, the first trailer, that's like the, the least thing that I hated. <laughs> that should be like the last thing you should be worrying about. Exactly. But like, you know, now so that now that we're talking about now that we're talking about stuff, uh, the latest thing that uh, SJWs are upset about um, with the Doom Eternal trailer that we got, where there was a throwaway line where it's like, "Remember, demon could be offensive." Call them the mortally challenged, and people oh, got upset that. with that. that. Was so fucking funny! Like normal people see that and they chuckle at it because they know it's ridiculous. People mm-hmm. who have nothing better to do with their lives but be outraged all the time got legitimately upset over that. Oh, it's so good! And, and like, I knew they would. It was so perfect. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things though that like it's just so goofy. How could you truly be upset over it? Like what? What's What's wrong with that? Like, what? It's, it's this, well, their inability to take a joke with. Yeah. And them it immediately, oh, it well, it belittles people who have a different identity or anything like that. No, it, it, it really doesn't. It's, it really, it's a joke. It's, it's a throwaway line that you should not give. And it's like, it's like you being outraged by this, or you being legitimately offended, or you being upset over it. That's just giving us more fuel to make fun of you. Oh yeah, it's it, you make it worse by getting by like getting so outraged that you know articles are being written BuzzFeed. You could hear the fucking keyboards clicking. Like, no, just chill the fuck out. It yeah, it's like like it's not it's not that serious. And with you sitting there and you getting upset over it, you're just giving you're feeding you're feeding people who would troll you. And they're feeding the people who legitimately are shitty about that sort of thing and giving them something more like, see, look at how fucking offended they get over this little shit. And it's, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, like, they're you're fucking, ugh. Like, why? God. Why are you upset over that of all things? You yeah. know, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, there are women in the world getting their clitorises cut off so that they can't experience sexual pleasure and you're worried about a throwaway line in a video game that you're not even the target audience for. Like, yeah. So much more horrible shit going on in the world. But this, yeah. This is not something that you should be wasting your energy and time on being upset over. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not trying, I don't want to tell you what to be upset over, but in this particular context, there are far, far worse things going on that could actually deserve, you know, if you put as much energy into it as you do into being outraged, you could have solved 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. But, you know, enough of the social commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This just bothers me, man. Some of the dumb shit people get upset over. <laughs> oh, well. This kind of the world we live in. Uh, uh, isn't it, isn't it grand? Culture. Yep. All right, I'm done. I don't have anything else to say. Unless yeah, you guys want me, to, unless you want me to rant over like you know crossplay again, I, I'm I'm good. <laughs> God. So if you enjoyed I, this episode, you know, give us a give us a I, thumbs up. You know, rate us on yeah. iTunes if you're listening to us on iTunes. Visit our social media pages. You know, you can find all that on ungodlygeeks.com. Go check us out. Yeah. Maybe throw us a buck and get your name in our credits. Yeah. Check out our Patreon. It's there. <laughs> Yeah, patreon.com slash ungodly geeks. You know, like I said, go throw us a buck, man. You know, we'll put your name in the credits. You give us enough money, we'll, we'll insult you on air. Is that, is that actually? Yeah, no, that's a, that's an actual tier. Um, 
it's like if you give us ten bucks a month, we will. And we and I've limited to like I think five slots. If you give us ten bucks a month, we give you like at, at the end of every episode, we shout your name out. And then I've said I've added so that and we might also make fun of you, which is probably what we'll do. We'll probably make fun of you. Um, yes. So yeah, and shout out even to you. You still have our eternal gratitude. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> we'll insult you or mention something you're working on, or maybe we'll just make up a story about you. So yeah, you know, whatever. Yep. All right, guys. Make- yeah, no, it's fun shit. So for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. And you guys take it easy. Peace. Yay. Fuck EA. <laughs>